So what we do is we come here, CD-ROM drive, next, give it an ISO image. Now, you want to download a Linux CD. I've downloaded uh, the Debian uh, install CD. So I'm just going to browse to it. It's on my one terabyte storage. And it is the Debian 760 here, AMD64 net install CD. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Now here's another problem. It's not going to boot off of this. So um, we have to now go to options, uh, boot options, tell it to run, go into the BIOS screen when it first starts up. Okay, now we're ready to start this thing up. Power, power on, and we want to open a console. Here's our console. Um, by the way, if it doesn't resize itself correctly, you can come up here to view and uh, resize auto fit window, something like, stuff like that. So in here, arrow over to boot. Hit the plus sign when you, you bring the little cursor over CD-ROM at the plus sign. Brings it to the top, just like your normal BIOS that you're probably used to. And then we head over here to exit. Exit saving changes. Yes. Now we're going to boot up into the install screen. We don't want to install it. We want to go to advanced options for Debian. We want to go down to rescue mode. Now we're going to get all of this. We have to go through all of this. United States, uh, American English. Uh, <clears throat> it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a lot of the acting like it's doing an install. I guess it's just loading things. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we want a command prompt we, we're just gonna, we're just trying to get a bash prompt but we don't want to have to mount the drive we, we the drive needs to be unmounted I just pick any name that it gives don't worry about the domain name um, I usually do set my Pacific time zone just paranoid enough to Try and make sure I set that right. Doesn't matter though. So here's where you do not want to accept the default. Uh, enter rescue mode, device to use as a root file system. Right here it says device to use as a root file system. You want to go down to do not use a root file system right here. Do not use a root, root file system. Now execute a shell in the installer environment. This is all we want. This is what we've been trying to get at, is to have a shell here. Here's where we begin doing the magic. Now, it told us earlier the disk was SDA. Mount will show SDA. It's probably not mounted. But we saw earlier it was talking about SDA. F disk slash dev slash SDA. Notice if you put SDA1, you won't find a partition to remove because that's actually a partition. You want to just do SDA. Now we do P to print the partitions. Now what we're seeing here is our beginning and ending sectors here. Starts at 2048, ends at 20,000, blah, blah, blah. Okay. What we want to do is Notice up here, though, there's a total of 41,000 sectors now. That's what happened when we increased the, the disk size in, in uh, the ESX console, the vSphere console. So that would normally have been the max, which is these would normally be equal. So what we want to do is we're going to delete this partition. We hit D, boom. Partition is now gone. If I do P now, that's no longer there. So you can see here, up here, it was here. Now it's gone. So now we're going to do new. We're going to do primary, so that's the default. We're going to do one, that's the default. First sector 2048, which makes sense because you see the previous partition had 2048. We want to we wanna make that the same. Um, now look, it's offering the default 41,009. Uh, <clears throat> So, I'm sorry, it's showing the default of 41,943,000, which is pretty close to what we see up here. In fact, I think it's one less than that. So we're going to pick that. Now we've resized our partition. W to write it, 
now it's time to do e2fsck-f slash dev slash sda1. This will repair the file system. And it's, it, it might take it a minute to run. Um, and then we begin to resize the file system and we're done. Um, this is pretty much what it takes. So uh, a lot of people are confused. They, they can follow instructions and do this part, but they're confused about getting the live CD to boot right and get the, you know, get the bash prompt to come up and some of the options in uh, the vSphere client not working for them because something's grayed out or whatever. And uh, that there may be because they have snapshots, but uh, this is pretty much all it takes. And it uh, looks like we're almost done with the uh, E2 FSCK. By the way, resize 2FS is the next command. It will not run unless you do the E2 FSCK. <sighs> I should have done a Y. There. Uh, and you can see there it, it corrected some kind of count. See, it corrected some kind of count. That might also be a, a consequence of us increasing the file system size. Not 100% sure, but. So now resize 2FS. SDA1. Resizing file system. Um, this is another thing that can take some time uh, resizing the file system. Um, you can see here um, a difference here. Right here, it shows that we have um, 10,234,208 blocks, so about 10 million blocks. Down here, you can see it's resizing it to 20 million blocks. So you can see the growth happening right here. The resize to FS is, uh, well, up here, when we saw this 41 million number, it was talking about sectors. It wasn't talking about blocks. So. Uh, this is a different language down here where we're doing the resize to FS. Um, and again, this takes a little while. I'll move that up a little. when it's done, we'll just restart and uh, make sure that everything looks okay. It might be wise probably to do another FSCK when you're done. I'm, uh, I'm probably going to do that. Yeah, E2 FS. It's finished now. Uh, it shows here now. File system um, is now 20,970,496 blocks long. FSCK. SDA1. I'm just doing one more E2 FSCK just to make sure that we're so good, but I think the resize to FS already makes sure that the uh, file system has integrity, so I don't think this will find anything now. directory structures, checking inodes blocks, uh, group summary info, it's just about done now. See if it asks me to fix anything. I don't think it will though, I don't think it even could, I think the resize to FS already does it. Yeah, that came up clean. So now, what do we do? Well, first we have to make sure that the um, drive, we have to edit the settings real quick here. 
come down here to the CD, <clears throat> tell it don't connect a power on. PS operating system has disconnect and override the lock, yes. So now we're telling it we don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> I lost the uh, VM console. <clears throat> Just close a few things. Close. Here it is. Okay. So now we're just going to reboot. Ah, frustrating. The uh, the drive is still connected. We're going to power it off. This is a little wrestling game you get into sometimes, if you're not careful. Um, connected power on is not set. Power it on. Let's see if we have another problem. It looks like the console, by the way, the console glitches out sometimes like this. It's on. The console's just not responding. You just have to close it, right click, go to uh, open console again. And uh, now I have a console. And now we're back to normal. Log in as root. Hario is the default password, df dash h. And uh, look at that. Now we're 20 gigs. Uh, that's, that's what we were trying to do. So we've managed to uh, grow the file system to from 9.7 gigs to 20 gigs. Hopefully that'll be all the information you need to get going on something like this.